So welcome back guys. It has been a long time, hasn't it? I think it's been about two weeks. Well, it's a long time for me. So two weeks since I uh, did a review on Project 59, which is pretty cool. And today I thought I'd try something a little bit different with this. So I saw this, oh, gosh, about a month or two ago when um, the new 2016s came out with all the upgrades. And I saw the street glide and I thought, Do you know what, that looks pretty sexy. So I spoke to the guys at Shores and I said, can I take it out? Love to do a review on it. And they said, yes, yeah, so yeah. as well. But in terms of the breakdown of the bike, let's give you some history. So let's move on to some uh, film shots that I've done earlier today and then I'll take you through it. So the history of the street glide um, started off in 2006. That's when it was first introduced by uh, Willie G, the man behind Harley Davidson in terms of design. Um, the 2006 model had a 88 CI five-speed box. Um, then in 2007, they gave it a little bit of an upgrade and it had the 96 cubic inch six-speed box. Box. Now the big thing is that they needed to make some massive changes uh, for Harley Davidson, especially the touring range, because it is one of the most popular bought products um, in in their range. In 2014, the Rushmore changes took place, which was a massive overhaul. So in total, they made over 100, and, or just on the button actually, 127 changes, uh, and these are the, some of the changes that were made. So they stepped it up to the 103 V twin. Um, they then introduced a hydraulic. Um, Actuated clutch, um, navigation, and button a color screen, which is pretty cool. Um, then they redesigned uh, the front end, so they put the bat wing in, which I personally really like, um, and beefier forks. There's just a few of of what they actually did for 2017, and this has been the big buzz for Harley Davidson um, this this year, as in 2016. Um, they introduced some real big changes, and they focused primarily on it delivering a new engine, and on top of that, some new suspension. So what we've effectively got now is the 107 air-cooled Milwaukee 8 engine. Um, you've also got the Showa suspension um, which, which has made the bike or given it some you know a much better uplift in terms of performance um, and comfort as well. In terms of performance, what the Milwaukee 8 claims is that it delivers 111 pounds foot of torque at the crank at 3,250 RPM compared to 105 pounds foot for the 103. So it's quite a big difference there. Um, it's also meant to be quicker off the line. Uh, we all like a bit of quickness in our Harleys. So up to 11% faster uh, between 0 and 60 miles an hour. And then top gear up to 12% faster at 60 to 80 miles an hour. So for me, that's, that's a massive difference already. Um, they've also introduced a new counterbalance, which reduced the vibration of the idle by 75%. They didn't want it; they could have taken it to 100%, but you know the point of riding a Harley is to feel that vibration, so they left that 25% vibration in. But as you can imagine, if you've got um, application devices that you want to use, such as an iPhone, then having less vibration will really help you um, see in your phone rather than it shaking about like a Mexican bean. So guys, just quickly, let's run through the control section on the bike. Very similar to, to the rest of the Harley-Davidson range. Um, you've got your, your start-stop on the right-hand side um, with your hazards, etc. Uh, indicators, self-cancelling. Um, you've also got on the left-hand side then your horn, your lights, um, indicators. You've got Bluetooth. You've got voice activation. You've got a control section here for the home screen, which is really good. We'll get used in that. And then we've got cruise control as well, which has been explained to me, uh, but I'm still a little bit nervous using it, I must be honest. Um, but as always, let's get cracking. What I want to do now is just start her up like so. Well, that's pretty nice, isn't it? So let's hear what this motor sounds like. Are you ready for this? <laughs> so again, this is a stage one Screaming Eagle. Which is really nice, got a beautiful tone. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's Let's go home. Then we go media. Then we go to Benny's. Woohoo! Then we go on Spotify, guys. So, you know, when you've got an opportunity like this to test review a street glide, gotta use the music. So, I'll be playing today. Fake Obsession. Here you go, guys. Bit of a shout out for you lot. Straight away, guys, I can feel it is relatively heavy. Uh, but it's not too bad. Not as bad as I thought. I feel quite comfortable on it. So, let's just go. To do you whatever makes you happy. Straight away, the ergonomics are fantastic. Um, I've got a real issue with uh, flexibility in my legs and even with mid controls on a sports star, I feel crunched up. And obviously these aren't forward controls, but on the flat pedal, they just feel lovely and stretched out. This just feels great. The dials in front of me are relatively clear to see. So you've got the fuel gauge on the left hand side, speedo on the, just on the right, rev range on the right, and then the battery voltage, if you like. Okay guys, as with all of my test reviews, I've got my own test stretch that I use. So what we're gonna do is go into the roundabout test and let's just test the maneuverability and how easy it is to go round the roundabout. And I can tell you straight away, this is a piece of pee pee. I can't get over how easy it is to ride it such a bloody lump. Just works so well. I mean the front end, just for an example, the front end feels so light. It's absolutely great and the ground clearance on it is superb. Now don't get me wrong, I am not saying go around around about and start hitting 50 miles an hour. But for just chucking it about and from, sorry, just from looking at it and thinking what it can do, this is totally the opposite. It's magnificent. So guys, we're gonna take it into its urban stretch now and at the same time, get it out on the open road. Jeez, I can't get over how easy this is to ride. Okay, so we're coming into a 60, I'm at 40 miles per hour at 2000 revs. So let's see what all the fuss is about. Let's pull it back. It's lovely. You know, hitting those speeds, if if I was on my sporty, the wind would be batting me all over the place. I'm probably nearly in a in a tuck position to some extent. But that just felt great. Now don't get me wrong. The Milwaukee engine, the 107, is not gonna feel like something like a super bike speed, so uh, let's not get this review twisted. But it's just a nice consistent power all through that rev range was delivering me the same performance. Shoulder check. Let's get that music up. Free, I will love you. Eternally, eternally. Jim, bit of overtake in. Shoulder check. Let's see what this tour is about. Yeah! Woo! Okay guys, so we're gonna take it through the tight maneuvers test. It's one of my favorite bits. This is the bit where Shaw Harley Davidson closed her eyes and goes, shit, he's at it again. Woo! See what it's like right here, one of my favorite bends. Drop it down nicely. Okay, a bit on the back brake. Yes. Again, it's not, it's not massively fast for acceleration, but it's, again, it's consistent. You know, you, I prefer that in a bike rather than having a power band kick in. And again, coming into one of the hairpin turns. See what she's like. Oh, a bit of a car there. Nice.
again coming into a left turn. Woo. So yeah, overall, just in terms of manoeuvrability, going through some twisty lanes like I'm showing you at the moment, handling, comfort, it's all there. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I expect uh, the Toro riders that are pre-2016 uh, would notice quite a big quite a big difference for them but it's a great a great bike I mean I'm smiling I'm happy that's what a Harley Davidson is about one of the things that I heard is that they wanted to reduce uh, the whining noise and it drops down into into first gear so let's see what she sounds like second to first yeah I mean that that sounds pretty normal for me <laughs> so perhaps there's a difference Perhaps it's not, but you uh, pre-2016 Tourer riders would, would definitely know, but it feels fine. I mean, when you're dropping down the gears, you know, as long as you're not doing something stupid, like in one gear at super high revs and then dropping it straight into the gear below, then, you know, you should be absolutely fine. Off we go. You know, doing 60 miles an hour on this bike, and between 60 and 70 at the national speed limit for the UK. It's just an absolute joy. There's no wind buffering at all. It's really, really good. So guys, overall, I really like the bike. What do I like about it? Let's just break it down quickly, okay. Milwaukee engine, superb, amazing. 75% less vibration it is always good. Uh, from my perspective, but leaving that 25% in to make it feel like a Harley, spot on. In terms of performance, the engine, I think it's really good. Um, heat distribution, well, I can't really talk too much about that. I live in the UK, it's December, it's bloody freezing, uh, but I assume in the US or other hotter countries, this would be pretty much ideal. In terms of the gear selection, the smoothness of it, absolutely lovely. I, I Honestly, I cannot fault the engine I can't the only thing I can't comment on really is economy because I haven't ridden it for that long to, to give you that that information but I assume it's a lot better in terms of the comfort of the bike it's great I mean I genuinely feel like I'm sitting on a cloud and with that show of suspension at the front it it's super soft and handling it just helps the handling as well it's just great Maneuverability, I think I've demonstrated that quite a bit to you guys. You can seriously swing this thing about. Not as much as a, a sportster, but still, it's a fantastic bike. Now, as always, guys, I'm coming to the end of my test review. If you like the review, remember I'm not an expert. I just go from my gut feel and what I think of the bike. Please give it a thumbs up. As always, subscribe to my channel. I always say do it because it's bloody free. Lots going on. Battle of the Kings is happening at the moment, which I've just filmed the last uh, chapter for that. So that'll be released soon, along with my Sports to Customization series. And as always, all the best. Safe riding. This is Mo Newbrider signing off. In sunny England, in December, on a beautiful street glide. Take care. So guys, I've just got off my... Um my test review on the street glide and it just so happens uh, Chris pulled up in his street glide which is all blinged up as I would call it <laughs> so Chris has kindly agreed to be on camera so can you explain from your perspective the difference between the previous model yes, before the yeah. upgrades and now how has that differed for you um, as a rider well for me as a rider the uh, the new Milwaukee 8 is a lot smoother with the transmission you don't get that clunkiness when you change down and, and on overrun obviously with the Milwaukee 8 it's a much more powerful engine as well yeah. now I've stayed I've gone one more I've stage one it and it's absolutely awesome it's the fantastic. most fantastic bike I've had I've had a Harley since the early 80s and this one I've got a brand new brake out as well but this one surpasses everything I've had it's absolutely mm -hmm. the dog's doodahs <laughs> brilliant <laughs> Chris thank you for your time That's okay right, no take problem. care <laughs>